saying the punch left Brocoglio dazed and possibly concussed. Uh, he didn't look dazed and concussed, uh, but uh, I don't know. Let's see that hit again. Uh, he, he probably could have been dazed and concussed. Session reacts. I'm your host, Attorney Marcus Session. Today's video. Video shows Meriden officer punch person in the face during road rage incident. Oh, I swear our cops got to do better than this. Thank you guys for always tuning in. Please hit that like and subscribe button to help me to get these numbers up. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. Nato Fox 61 exclusive. A Meriden police officer is charged with assault after a violent road rage incident caught on camera. Fox 61, the only station to obtain both the citizen dash cam and police body cam video. Fox 61's Matt Karen went to the Meriden Police Department in search of answers. He joins us now live with what he discovered. Matt. First, I want to start by saying, guys, there are cameras everywhere in America in 2024 always act as if there's a camera on you because more than likely there will be. Tell people this all the time. Obviously this cop wasn't thinking like that. Yeah. Well, despite this incident occurring back in December, it only came to light now thanks to a Freedom of Information Act request and a tip. Investigators say the video shows an off-duty Meriden police officer with more than 20 years of law enforcement experience reaching into a citizen's vehicle and punching him in the face. And the second thing I'll say, guys, th there's some serious road rage going on. First off, if you think you're about to be on the receiving end of something like this, roll your windows up. Don't keep them open. You know, at least provide that extra layer of protection and safety for yourself. And um, if you're on the opposing end of the road rage incident, you're the one that likes to get out the car and, and punch and, and hit people and go crazy. Remember, you will be charged uh, for an assault or a battery, and I'll discuss the difference between the two here in a minute. <laughs> December 8th, 2023, 37-year-old Thomas Brocuglio was driving his company vehicle with the dash camera on as he approached a red light at the intersection of France Street and Cromwell Ave in Rocky Hill. How are we doing? Yeah. What are you doing? The truck he was honking at was being driven by 57-year-old off-duty Meriden Police Corporal Alan Ganter. Wait a day. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, so here's another thing that I'm observing. You know, some people may say, yeah, yeah, well, he threw the middle finger at the guy. Yeah, don't get me wrong. This guy is a total jerk, a total jerk for taunting the man, honking, throwing the middle finger up. Y you don't want to do things like that to exacerbate a situation that could potentially be negative and get out of hand regardless. So I would strongly advise against that. This is not legal advice, but I would strongly advise against honking the horn and throwing the middle finger up at somebody, like thinking it's all good, right? That's when Ganter got out of his truck, flashed his badge, and approached Brocuglio. Really? You already flashed the badge, but now you want to come up some more to exert some more dominance. I don't get it. Yeah. Where does it say that? It says stop here on red. Corporal Ganter began taking pictures of Brocuglio's license plates. Brocuglio accused Ganter of being on his phone as the confrontation escalated. I saw you looking no, down doing everything phone. else. No, no, I was moving something in my back. Ganter then threatens to give Brocuglio a ticket and call his supervisor. Sure. Um, you off duty. You can't give a ticket. Uh, you can call your supervisor out there who maybe can issue a ticket, but you off duty, dog. You can't give a ticket. Ganter drove away as Brocuglio placed a call to Rocky Hill Police. Okay, that was very disturbing that uh, this off-duty cop would lose his temper like that. And yeah, it's it's, it's unwarranted. So, uh, I think we heard in the video that the off-duty officer was charged with assault. So, people wondering why not a battery. A lot of times those things are charged together, assault and battery. But here's the difference. 
An assault doesn't necessarily mean that there's ha there has to be any contact made. Uh, and of course, it varies from state to state. But traditionally and generally speaking, an assault occurs when a defendant acts with the intent to commit an imminent apprehension of a harmful or offensive contact. And that apprehension occurs. So what apprehension is, is not necessarily fear. Appre apprehension could be, yo, I saw it coming and I expected it. So it doesn't necessarily mean that the driver here was in fear or anything. It means that, oh, you know, I had to brace myself or I saw it coming. So that's an apprehension. Uh, from what we can see here, that apprehension occurred. Usually, they say if you could see the hit coming or if you could see the harmful offensive contact coming, then there was an apprehension, thus the assault. Whereas a battery occurs when a defendant acts with the intent to commit a harmful or offensive contact and that contact directly or indirectly occurs. We can see here that there was a battery as well. So you can be charged with assault and battery, which like I said, that's why those two are usually charged together because if you get the battery, nine chances out of 10, you get an assault. Let's just say if somebody's back was turned and you came and hit them from behind, well, that would be a battery only because there was no way the person could have apprehended the harmful or offensive contact unless uh, someone yelled at him say hey man look somebody's coming to hit you and he did like this before the the hit occurred or before the contact occurred between assault and battery though subtle there are some differences Frank, you don't know, yeah, sir, uh, yeah i was just assaulted by a police officer who punched me in the face through my window rocky hill police responded and generated this incident report saying the punch left brocuglio dazed and possibly concussed uh, he didn't look dazed and concussed, uh, but uh, I don't know. Let's see that hit again. Uh, he, he probably could have been dazed and concussed. He probably could have been. Uh, who am I to judge? I've only fought mixed martial arts for like five years, and they were only amateur fights. So, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Everybody's different. Rocky Hill police made contact with Ganter at his residence. The interaction on body camera. Is he pressing charges against me? Like for breach? You damn well he is, but it's not for breach, buddy. Breach? <laughs> breach of the peace? Is that what you're about to say? Nah. He's pressing charges on you for assault and battery. Yeah, because like, I yelled well, at stuff for assault, because you hit me. <laughs> Same guy did. Any video that you have. Then Ganter asks off. That's why I always say there's always a camera watching. Careful what you're doing. Officers, if he can charge Brocoglio. And there's nothing where I can press for, for breach of peace for him yelling at me, whatever it is. Ultimately, Ganter, who is a school resource officer for the Thomas Edison Middle School, was charged with breach of peace. And See, uh, no, okay, don't, you know, here is the deal. I, I, I think he's a real officer, okay, but the kids at this school probably call him a flashlight cop all the time or a security guard, and that's probably why he's running around pissed and has road rage. I, I get it. I get it now. I see it. <laughs> yeah. Assault. I'm Matt Karen with Fox 61 News. Okay. We'd like to talk to somebody about Officer Alan Ganter punching a civilian in the face. Um. <laughs> we were told someone from Internal Affairs would speak to us, then told no one was available. No Meriden Police did send Fox 61 a statement saying an internal affairs investigation determined Ganter did violate the Meriden Police Department's rules of conduct and as a result was suspended for five days without pay and will be required to attend de-escalation training for three consecutive years. De-escalation training definitely needed, definitely necessary for all officers on an annual basis. Uh, the five-day suspension without pay, yeah, okay, yeah, I can see them doing that. If I'm on the receiving end of that hit, I think a larger penalty needs to be paid by this officer. And of course, the civilian, the citizen can go after the officer in a civil suit, and I'm sure that's going to follow next. All this guy's to do is get a lawyer, and he can uh, sue the man for civil battery uh, that's tortious assault and battery yeah that needs to happen asap like rocky i got bars and after issuing that statement the meriden police did also say they would not be addressing this issue any further nor would they be making anyone available for an on-camera interview we're live in meriden matt karen fox 61 connecticut's news station well i guess that's how it's going down in connecticut y'all in connecticut y'all so tell me what you guys think. Please leave your responses in the comments. 
What else should have happened to this cop? I want to hear from you guys. Thank you guys for always tuning in. Remember, please hit that like and subscribe button. Share the video. Share the page. I thank you guys for all your help, and I thank you for watching. Until next time, take it easy, my friends. Let's go.